I'm Jamali and living in the UK being Camel Brown, sometimes there's these reoccurring events that happen. So these are my top 10 things that happen when you're the only non-white guy in the room. 10. Now this question isn't racist. It's quite nice of you taking the time out to ask me where my family are from. But when I tell you Jamaica and you proceed to tell me about your holiday to Trinidad as a sort of nudge nudge wink wink of, I've been to that country that's kind of like the country you're saying right now. Guess what? I've never been to Trinidad and no, I don't know that nice fellow Winston. Normally when people ask me this question, I look shocked and appalled. Not because I'm offended, I just like to make white people feel awkward. Nine. I appreciate the effort, hoping I could teach you a few words. Let's be honest, swear words. But number one, there is no African language. There's over 2,000 languages in Africa. And plus, I'm British. I'm not learning another language. I'm happy going abroad, pointing and speaking loudly. A. But Jamali, what's going on? I don't know. One second, let me call the ISIS hotline. I've got uh, Bin Laden, Robert Mugabe. Nope, sorry, don't seem to have the number right now. And plus, I never understand how people think this convo is gonna end. I lose both ways. I say I know nothing, you get suspicious, you tell the police, they tap my phone. I'm an expert, you get suspicious, you tell the police, and they tap my phone. Seven. No, I don't speak Indian. Six. This one really pisses me off. I know you're being sensitive, but I am not Muslim. And I know you're sitting at home like, ah. I mean, he says he's not a Muslim. Look, I'm cheap. I would love for you to buy me a drink so I can get a mysterious phone call and not pay for the second round. Five. The answer is yes, I do know my dad. But sometimes I wish the stereotype was true. So I can imagine my dad was someone better like The Rock or Idris Elba. But the answer is yes, I do know my dad and he's an arsehole. Four. This person I meet at a nightclub, he's normally drunk and he has friends with names like Philip and Niles. And he comes up to me like, hey bloods, what's up G, what's poppin? <laughs> oh my God, what a creative way of bringing back blackface. Well, at least he's not wearing a Native American headscarf. No, no way he is. Free. Guess what, Ethel? I doubt you have anything I want. What do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be like, hey lady, give me that winter fuel allowance now. I ain't playing. And guess what? When you cross the road, I can still see you. Just because you've crossed the road doesn't now make you invisible. Two. What is your obsession with hair? Do you think it brings you luck and good fortune? I remember one time, true story, I was in Estonia. Don't ask why. And in Estonia, they have 0.3% black people. And I was with a guy who has never met a black person before. And at the end of the trip, he asked me, Jamali, we are friends. May I touch your hair? Normally I would say no, but I was like, you know what? Have at it. I let him touch my hair. And after he touched it, he looked disappointed. And I said, what's the matter? And he looked at me and he said, it just feels like hair. One. 